All clear. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Chapter 7, The Law of Shorts and Professional Negligence. So, what do you think about the name? Todd, uh, like, uh, Joe, uh, as far as Todd is considered, like, the laws of society, maybe? Laws of society? And professional is negligence is, like, uh, less care, like, negligible negligence means lack of care okay yes ma'am yes That's right. negligence means lack of care uh, to the best of my knowledge The law of torts and professional negligence. The first word is tort and the second tort. word is professional negligence. Tort ka kya matlab hai? Professional negligence ka kya matlab hai? Abhi hum dekhne hai thodi deir mein. Is chapter mein humare paas art topics hai jo humne cover karne hai. Tort and other wrongs, the tort of negligence, duty of care, breach of duty of care, casualty and remoteness of damage, defenses to negligence, professional advice and the Caparo decision. So the first one, tort and other wrongs. Please read Ali. You are mute. Oh, yeah. The law gives various rights to the person. When such a right is infringed, the wrongdoer is liable in tort. Right. The law gives various rights to persons. When such a right is infringed, the wrongdoer is liable in tort. Uh, tort ka basically matlab ya maksad kya hai or, and how tort is different from breach of contract. Right? Because if breach of contract or tort is one thing, then it means that we are learning a different word. Kyun when the breach of a contract and tort is the same thing. What's the point of doing this one all over again? So, yes, let's see that how a tort is different from a breach of contract. Please read. Tort is distinguished. One, yeah, it is distinguished from other legal wrongs. Uh, a. It is not a breach of contract where the obligation which is alleged to have been breached arose under agreement between two parties. And second point is, it is not a crime where the object of proceeding is to punish the offender rather than to compensate with the victim. What is it? In the first case, there is no party ko koi contract, nahi hota, mutual like, consent. Nahi hota. That is the main difference. And the second difference is it's a, not a crime, it's just unethical. Exactly. So uh, it cannot be like... Exactly. First of all, there uh, is the no part, contract uh, between the, the parties. Tort can arise when there is no contract between the parties. It's not necessary that both parties have a contract between the two parties. If there is a contract, if there is a contract, then it can come to the zone of professional negligence. But if there is no contract, then that means it's a tort. And it's not a crime. It's not a crime, it's not necessary that it's a legal crime. और जरूरी नहीं कि ये कोई बहुत बड़ा कोई गुनाह अजीम हो ये कोई छोटी सी बात भी हो सकती है और ये कोई ऐसी बात भी हो सकती है कि जो क्राइम के लेवल की हो मगर वो अनइंटेंशनली की गई हो लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल आपने बाल आप गए हो सैलून बाल कटवाने के लिए ठीक है अब जब आप बाल कटवाने जा रहे हो आप ये सोच के थोड़ी जा रहे हो कि आपके साथ कोई हादसा होगा आप तो अपने एक जनरल हाइजीन के लिए जा रहे हैं and when you go there, that particular barber is not uh, is not professionally careful while cutting your hair. And maybe कोई ऐसी चीज़ कोई ऐसा tool वो use कर लेता है जो जो क्या हो सकता है infected infection उसमें हो सकता है infected हो सकता है defected हो सकता है it is highly possible कि वो आपके बाल काटते काटते वो आपके थोड़ा सा कान आपका कट जाए या आपके neck पे cut लग जाए तो अगर देखा जाए तो गला काटना इस लाइक अ क्राइम ठीक है आपने किसी को अटैक किया है किसी की लाइफ पे अटैक किया है बट चूंकि वो अनइंटेंशनली हुआ चूंकि वो एक जॉब परफॉर्म करते हुए हुआ 
तो वो क्राइम के जुमरे में नहीं आएगा मगर वो प्रोफेशनल नेग्लिजेंस के जुमरे में लाजमी आएगा कि वाई वॉज ही नॉट केयरफुल बाई परफॉर्मिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर जॉब और वाई वॉज दैट पर्टिकुलर डॉक्टर वॉज नॉट केयरफुल बाई परफॉर्मिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर सर्जरी कि लाइफ एंड डेथ का मैटर बन जी मन में ठीक सो दिस इज द बेसिक ऑल राइट प्लीज रीड दिस बॉक्स इज वेल sure a tort is a civil wrong and the person wronged sues in civil court for the compensation or an injunction the claimant is claimant uh, generally is that they suffered a loss such as personally personal injury uh, at the hands of the defendant and the defendant should pay the damages in tort no previous transaction or contractual relationship need exist the parties may be compensated if injured such as when the motorist knocks a pedestrian in the street the claim in tort is based in the general law of duties and rights kya samajh aaya yahi ke jo tort hai wo jo hai na like ek society mein koi bhi cheez wrong doing hoti hai to wo civil court se ja ke compensation le sakta hai not punishment nahi dilwa sakta and the second thing is ke isme koi contractual exist nahi karta koi bhi like contract exist nahi karta so yahan pe just जो है ना ड्यूटीज और राइट्स की नेगलिजेंस होती है राइट एंड द एग्जांपल व्हिच दे गिव इज दैट अ कार नॉक्स डाउन अ पेडेस्ट्रियन इन द स्ट्रीट बिकॉज़ ही वाज नॉट केयरफुल और मे बी ही वाज ड्रंक सो देयर वाज नो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बिटवीन द पेडेस्ट्रियन एंड द ड्राइवर वाज देयर एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट या नो बट इट वाज हिज लीगल ड्यूटी इट वाज हिज लीगल ड्यूटी टू बी केयरफुल व्हाइल ड्राइविंग हम्म जुमरे में आ What is passing off? Please read. Passing off is the use of the name, mark, or description by one business that misleads the consumer to believe that their business is that of another. The tort often occurs when expensive designer products such as watches, clothing, and are copied and sold as an original and suspecting customer. Okay. Got it. What did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, basically, uh, is like, uh, like, disguising the brand, something like uh, misleading the customers by uh, copying the brand and like uh, using the similar name just to uh, like. Uh, exactly. Are these original to... brands or are these fake? Fake, 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 fake ones. You must have seen it a lot of these kinds of. Uh, businesses over Shoes here. Shoes of Nike, McDonald's, yeah. chips, and so on. This is passing off. This you are not. आपको कोई मायदा नहीं है, कोई contract नहीं है उस particular company के साथ, and you are being so uh, mischievous in your act that you are misleading your consumer. I have seen many uh, brand names which are fake, and they just change one word in this in 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 the word which you change one letter, the spelling. Yep. and then they use it to just sell the product as if it's original right right assalam alaikum kinza how are you assalam alaikum ma'am i'm so sorry uh, they were my laptop was giving me some hard time it's okay yeah. oh, so we just started this chapter chapter 7 the oh. tort okay so there a bigger can do the harm to man ali now you explain what is tort and what are the types of tort sure Mean uh, for, uh, starting from the differences. So what is tort? Uh, the first thing that we have to study is like the difference between the tort and the contract. So there the main difference is A and B. The A is like it's not a breach of contract. Like it's not a contract. Contract is basically in between two persons, by in the basis of mutual understanding and uh, consent. But in uh, like in tort, there is no such contract is made or no such uh, mutual consent is made. Second thing, it's not a crime. Ah, uh, like it can lead uh, some harm, 
but it is not a crime like uh, there is no such punishment uh, for tort uh, rather than uh, there is a compensation in form of like uh, any doing of an action or any uh, like in the form of monetary second thing like if a uh, person is doing uh, it has done something wrong like a tort so they can appeal in the civil court and then uh, like it is not done in intentionally like it is basically due to the lack of neg uh, lack of care and like unprofessional behavior so you can say that so is it like a it's like a paper and we sign it or no no it's not like a paper it's like for example if you are if you have gone, gone to the barber shop and if he has like uh, not made sufficient uh, sop and you got some cut on your neck so there is no like contract between you and the barber but oh, that okay. is due to the negligence of the barber so uh, like he has done harm to you but not intentionally and there was not no contract but that was sort of a thought okay, okay. so Likewise, that means i can i can go to uh, a court and i can say that yeah, it's, uh, in the form of thought okay so okay, just an example over like here let's just make one more thing very much clear that for a tort to happen there is it is not necessary that the two parties have a contract between each other okay for a breach to happen there it is extremely essential that the two parties are into a contract with each other then only a breach of contract can happen right but a tort may happen even if there is no contract or no a mutual understanding between the two parties moreover if there is a contract between the two parties and the tort happens it is not necessary that that particular thing was written in the contract like the example which just have been shared that if the barber cuts your neck a little bit there is a contract between you two because you went there to get a haircut but there is no such term and exactly. condition i was just about to say contract. that that act actually yeah but then, this it, it will be considered as a contract because when i'm of accepting the offer he is accepting my yes, offer i am yes, asking him to you know cutting your hair you are gone there you are paying him so that there, there is a contract but that particular term or condition is not mentioned in the contract that he will not cut your neck or he will be careful while cutting your hair it's obvious it's understood it's yeah. duty of care what is it known as duty of duty care, of care. So for, for duty of care it is not necessary that if this duty of care is violated then it's not necessary that the two parties must be into a contract okay so that's the case secondly it's not a crime that means even if the salon uh, the barber cuts your neck it, it does not mean that he becomes a murderer right because that was not the intention right it was just a professional negligence yeah. or maybe he was in a rush okay so that's the case and Ma'am, what's the name of this chapter the torts the law of torts and professional negligence chapter 7 okay then we started off with the types of torts now there are two types of torts number 1 passing off number two negligence negligence we have understood uh, with two three examples like one salon the second one a careless driver who was driving the car rashly and he hit off a motorist okay a pedestrian so that's a negligence passing that you are creating a business or you are starting up a business with the name of another brand but your that name you are using that name illegally and misleading the consumer okay so misleading the few consumer that means you are a fake brand so that is passing off okay next the tort of negligence kinza please read uh, negligence is the most important modern tort to succeed in an action of negligence the claimant must prove that the defendant had a duty of care to avoid causing injury damage or loss there was a breach of that duty by the defendant the consequences the claimant suffered injury damage or loss this is all the examples you just gave of the barber right okay. 
so it becomes necessary for the for the claimant to prove in the court that the defendant had a duty of care okay for example um let's take like in uh, when we drive on the roads of karachi you see that there are so many manholes on the road right and those sometimes those manholes are open which yes ma'am may cause a serious injury or damage to any passer by or even a car so do you think that whose duty of care is it to take care or to ensure that the man holds are closed government is it government or it is the people who are responsible the to take care of the roads and the man holds right but it is a duty of care and it is but obvious it's must so if we have that kind of a court system over here we as a public as a normal people can go and sue that particular organization that particular body who is responsible for making sure that these manholes are closed and taking care of all the gutter lines and everything is working smoothly and operate and having smooth operations or else somebody can be injured right yeah, next right there was a breach of that duty by the defendant now you have to prove in the court that there was a duty of care number 1 number 2 that duty was breached and number 3 because of that breach of duty somebody or you particularly because you are going to the court and suing that defendant that you were injured you suffered a damage or you suffered a loss so these three things must be proved in the court number 1 the defendant had the duty of care number 2 he breached that duty of care and number 3 you suffered a loss because of that breach of duty of care now this is not like a breach of contract because breach of breach of contract means breach of a particular term condition or warranty here ma'am is it necessary that i am the one suffering or if i am like just afraid that anybody can else suffer any kid can come and suffer so even yes, i yes, can you, go to yes it's the it's not necessary that you have to be the one who suffer maybe your child suffered maybe your sister suffered maybe your mother suffered and you have you are going on behalf of that person right whoever mm-hmm. suffered is right now in the hospital because of the careless driver driving and he just hit on the footpath and maybe your sister or maybe your mother or anyone you know your friend got injured and right now she's in the hospital how can she go and fight the case so you on behalf of that person is as approach the court no no actually i mean like if uh, you were talking about the holes uh, in the on the street so i'm talking about that that if like i'm afraid any elder person can come and pass by or any kid is going back to the school and you know can get injured so as a society obviously i'm taking care of it so can i go or uh, like i should be waiting for someone to suffer and then go to the court you can go beforehand you can uh, <laughs> call at the relative number and complain lodge a complaint you can you can inform so that will also come under the heading of fraud or we Say have so. to make sure that first the incident has happened then okay. it's a tort what are we studying we are studying law law and specifically we are studying related to uk law that means court cases that how a court will deal a case so tort of negligence will only occur when there is a loss somebody has suffered an injury or loss and then only okay. when you will go okay. to the court this particular case will be treated as a tort tort case okay now okay. the next definition please read mummy mm, yes Uh, the term negligence is used to describe carelessly carrying out an act and breaking a legal duty of care owed to another causing them loss or damage what are they saying it's a negligence they are saying that if i am doing any job carelessly and that is uh, and i am legally bound that i am uh, because of my duty somebody has got a loss or a damage so this is this was actually my duty of legal duty of care i should have been careful yeah. she's like 
The term negligence is used to describe carelessly carrying out an act and breaking a legal duty of care owing to another, causing them loss or damage. So we have already understood this liability. Alidi. Any legal person can commit and therefore, therefore be liable for a tort, providing the three-stage test is passed. This include, for example, the car who uh, injures a pedestrian, a company that causes death or injury to a customer, also an employer to be miraculously liable to the act of an employee. This means an employer uh, may be liable for the loss of the damage caused by an employee, providing the act were committed whilst the employee was performing the duties that, that were employed to do. Okay. Now, what is what are they trying to say? What did you understand? Yeah, basically, uh, uh, whoever is committing the act is the liable uh, for that tort. For example, if I'm an accountant, so it's my duty to like uh, issue a right check uh, from like uh, the company of mine uh, with the name of my company. If I like made a, if I've made the mistake, for example, if I put one zero more, so so the more uh, money is paid and uh, eventually the company will suffer. So I will be uh, like put liable for that mistake because that's my professional duty of care to like pay attention and do uh, whatever is my duty okay but i think ma'am they are saying that both will be liable even the companies will be liable too yes. if uh, we are uh, doing any act the, they will the company was, will also be answerable because they can ask the company that did you check all the documents all the you know so they will like if, if it's a car company and a driver has done something like sometimes it happens that uh, a bus driver just uh, make an accident and just run away so he is also liable of course but the company is whoever is the owner of the company of the bus services or he is also liable for that yeah and for Please. to make sure there is a test uh, of three stages to make sure who is liable so the company is also liable. The employer is liable. When the employer is liable, then you have, then you give this term or name this as vicariously liable. Vicariously liable. Now let's take a case. And the case is that you are a school, you are an institute, and you have hired a person A as your security guard. Okay. And you have a little bit of dormitory as well, where the students live, okay, like a hostel. What happens that in that hostel, that guard does something very cruel to one of the students, okay? Maybe he abuses one of the students. And the case comes up. The case comes up, the student informs his parents or his guardians and the guardians sue the school for it now when the school has been sued the school people the school management of course they they would love to defend themselves they would say no 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 it's not our fault uh, we didn't know about it and is it a, how can it be our fault how can you blame us it was that person and we we will punish that person for sure we will kick him out of the job and this and that and this and that so tell me or just uh, think of the reasons why the school should be held responsible or liable for this particular employee's act. Or do you think it is fair enough to do so? Yes, of course. Because it's school responsibility to overview them, to check them, to check the security, everything is okay. Uh, you know, the guard should be at a proper distance from the students. So obviously, it's a school duty because we are relying as a parent or as a, you know, uh, as a parent, we are relying on the school, not the guards. So we make sure that the school is there, the school is taking responsibility of the kids. So it's fair. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is why the employer is held vicariously responsible and liable for the act of the employee. Because it was they, the admin, who hired that guard. How can they hire them without verifying his character, without verifying his documents, without see, looking at his track? Or and without board, keeping an, an eye on him. Without yeah, keeping an eye on him, there so are much. so many CCTV cameras. Why were they not monitoring? What happened? And why it happened? And why so many episodes happened? And it came up so late. It came up on the, uh, you know, it showed up so late. This case came up in the screen so late. So of course the school was responsible. 
this is known as vicariously liability or vicariously being liable uh, it may happen in other cases as well where for example the company is delivering some uh, goods to another company to their clients and the driver is particularly in that on that day he was drunk and he drove and he met with an accident so of course the company would also be held liable why because they should have ensured that the driver is in a good state of mind and he is not drunk exactly. and there are proper because we trusted right. that company not the driver exactly. like if i am giving accounts to any company so i'll be uh, relying on that company not that accountant it's exactly. their duty to look at their accountant and you know their education and stuff next the duty of care in the please read in the land Mark case of Dong uh, Dongi versus Stevenson, 1932, the House of Lords ruled that a person might own a duty of care to another with whom they had no con contractual relationship at all. The doctrine has been uh, redefined in subsequent uh, ruling, but the principle is unchanged. Obviously, uh, doctrine means that uh, whatever we uh, has been followed before. So they are saying it. Uh, sometimes it happens that. we are not even uh, in a contract with uh, there is no contract at all between two person but still there they are one of the person is responsible and this is the principle and it it has not been changed then it's not necessary that there is a contractual relationship between the two parties in order to make sure that there was to be okay okay next to no versus stevenson 1932 this case what is this case all about let's read ali The facts. A purchase, uh, he purchased a bottle of a ginger beer for consumption by B. B drank part of contents which contained the remains of the decomposed snail and become became ill. Ill. The manufacturer argued that there was a contract between himself and B, and he B owed her no duty of care, and so was not liable. Decision. The House of Lords down the ground principle. that uh, every person owes a duty to care to the neighbor to person so closely and directly affected by uh, my act that i owe art reasonably to have them in the contamination as being so affected okay. yep so uh, a like basically purchase something from b and the b did not like care Uh, take you took took care about it and like there was like some infection happened in the beer bottle and the person became ill. So uh, basically the manufacturer was not responsible for it. Okay, he said that I'm not. There is a company A. Okay, there is a person B and there is the company C. Let's keep it company C. Okay, this is company. And then these are the two parties. A goes to the shop and purchases a ginger bottle belonging to this company. So basically, or legally, there's a contract between A and the company. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. What happens? A purchases this bottle and gifts it to B, and or maybe brings it for his wife or children or guest at home. B drinks. B drinks. No, A is a uh, A is a retailer. He he is a shopkeeper. A is customer a is purchaser okay customer and b is someone of customer yes like you can b see that relative b is wife b is child b is xyz person but a has purchased the bottle of beer and b has consumed it b is the consumer okay so they are saying officially the contract is between a and company Yeah. There is no contract between B and company, and B drank, consumed that bottle, and fell ill. Right? He fell ill, and because he fell ill, then what happened? A sued the company, and A said that because B fell ill, I will sue you. So the company says for itself to save itself that I had no duty of care to B. He means he did not purchase it. We were not in the contract yeah. with B. We were in contract with you, A, eh? and nothing happened to you. So, uh, they are trying to defend themselves, but okay. unfortunately, they can't because there is a general principle 
or a doctrine which says that due there was a duty of care between company and b why because whenever company is manufacturing any product it is its duty of care to ensure that the product is not defected and the product is fine and safe for health right but there was a decomposed snail in that bottle that means it was defected it was expired and therefore company has performed a negligence on its part right so this becomes a law of tort it, be it becomes a tort case and it is declared that there was a duty of care between b and the company as well okay next okay ma'am development of the doctrine can sir please read this narrow doctrine has this been this narrow doctrine has been much refined over the years since the snail made its celebrated appearance for any duty of care to exist it was stated in ans uh, versus madden london borough Co council 1977 that two stages must be tested is there sufficient proximity between the parties such that the harm suffered was reasonably foreseeable should the duty be restricted or limited for reasons of economic social or public policy they are saying that uh, was the owner of, uh, was he able to see the foreseen situations was he assuming it already was he intentionally doing it so this is one of the thing which will be considered and the other one is uh, should the duty be restricted or for any so, uh, should uh, that be uh, restricted at for example uh, like uh, there is a restrictions that you cannot sell expired stuff so is there any possibility that we can put up any restriction or limitation for the act whatever has been done like uh, like that uh, they were talking about bear is it possible to keep something restricted amount like uh, you know only the children uh, children cannot have it or some of the restrictions so that in future this thing never happen okay the thing over here is that when this case happened which case the deno versus stevenson case when the snail appeared so uh, there was a lot of conversation about this lot of conversation lot of talk about this that what should the court be saying about it what what kind of laws should be there so then they decided that okay there should be three three tests first they said there would be two stages but then later on soon after the capero case they converted into three stages okay and they are the same only as the two and it's the same okay the first one was the harm foreseeable Did the company know that अगर defected expired product बेचा तो किसी की सेहत के साथ खिलवाड़ हो सकता है? Did they know? Of course, they knew it. That if they are not careful while manufacturing anything, especially anything which which is consumed by the consumer, like for eating purposes or drinking purposes or maybe spraying purposes, and they know that there is some fault in the product. or there can be some fault in the product it, it is reasonably foreseeable what kind of losses or what kind of consequences it can come up with right second was there a relationship of proximity between the parties proximity between the parties that means that uh, did company know that this person would be harmed okay this person would be harmed like for example if i don't teach properly like right, was the were they were directly related to each other is it that not directly related proximity like were they focusing on the specific customer no 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 see mm -hmm. let's recall that case that case which we studied about a ship that a ship sunk and there was an accident and all the fuel in the ship floated in the ocean right and that fuel went to the seashore and there was a factory working at the seashore with fire and the the factory caught fire because of that oil that fuel so was that factory or was that loss foreseeable by the ship company no. were, were they expecting it was no. that factory in the proximity of that company's accident like they would have you know anyone could have judged it ki ha aisa to ho sakta tha ki wo oil tehta tehta wahan sea side pe chala gaya aur wahan aag lag gayi itni badi 
nobody could even think about it okay it, the surely the party which was which suffered the loss the party that is the factory that suffered the loss was not in the proximity of the ship of the company okay. but yes the ship knew that agar koi hadsa hota hai koi accident hota hai if there is an oil spill in the ocean there would be environmental pollution the sea animals would be affected and the jo loss hua wo to this was foreseeable yes and this was also in the proximity who was in the proximity the ocean animals were in the proximity of the company they knew about it so these are the three stages which you need to check verify that was the harm reasonably foreseeable was the relationship of proximity between the parties and considering the circumstances is it fair just and reasonable to impose a duty of care ठीक है अब जो शिप वाला केस था उसमें अगर फैक्ट्री ने सू कर दिया शिप की कंपनी को तो क्या वाज इट फेयर जस्ट एंड रीजनेबल टू इम्पोज दैट ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर ऑन द शिप नो राइट सो इन सम केसेस इट इज नो फॉर सम केसेस इट इज यस सो हाउ डू यू नो व्हेन यू विल चेक दीस थ्री पैरामीटर्स फॉर दैट वाज द हार्म रीजनेबली फोरसीएबल was the relationship of a pro- proximity between the parties or and is it fair just and reasonable to impose a duty of care or not ali clear ali is this clear? yes i'm clear 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 so, yeah, i'm just opening the laptop because my cell phone battery is down so i'm um, just opening okay. the laptop hearing you all now breach of duty of care in the read the second element that must be proven by the claimant in an action of negligence is that there was a breach of the duty of care by the defendant the first that the first thing that you need to prove as a claimant is that there was a duty of care the second that you yeah. need to prove is that that the breach of that particular duty of care did okay 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 so the basic rule the basic rule the following factors should be considered when deciding if a duty of care has been breached or not so number 1 probability probability of injury was there any probability that the person the claimant would get injured number 2 seriousness of the risk how serious was the the injury or how serious the injury could get now yeah. third issues of practicality and cost of course you would be checking that in order to take the precautions see let's talk about them duty of care duty of care and then there is a breach of this duty so duty of care means what for example you went to the salon and the barber auntie or the uncle was cutting your hair and by mistake they got you got a cut on the neck now that those scissors were not sterilized okay those scissors that particular razor was not sterilized and due to which you got uh, you got a disease you got hepatitis c or you got aids you know it got transferred to you through that cut now tell me what was the duty of care on uh, on the part of the salon and did they breach it and how could they have not breached it a, du- a duty of care was to uh, first of all be very careful and secondly to get the things sterilized because the uh, whatever like if they were working in the hospital the knives everything should be you know every equipment should be sterilized so it was the duty of the barber to you know follow the particular thing he was just taking care of his cost he was just getting rid of it was and um so that's why he, that was the duty of the barber right. to uh, so it was the duty of the salon people the barber to specially take care of the sops and do sterilize all the products as such and to ensure that while he is cutting he is being very careful and there should no there should not be any episode of getting any clients ear or neck or any body part getting a cut okay so that was the first duty of care now imagine that that particular duty that those particular steps were taken by the barber and the salon because when you sued them 
they showed in on the cctv that what was the baba doing before you arrived mm -hmm. and which instrument or which tool did he use or did he take out and it was clearly visible that he used a sterilized tool and he was careful and he was not drunk but it was just ho jata hai insaan a mistake hai thodi si aap hil gaye the customer bhi hil gaya tha aur wo bhi thoda sa hil gaya cut lag gaya so now that it's proven that the duty of there was a duty of care and it was not breached purposely all the steps were taken now what how can you as a customer be compensate i think i will uh, i will look into the matter that is it that serious like for example the cut is very deep and the person the other person is now going to a surgery so if it's the seriousness is uh, a lot so obviously the court will consider it a little differently how is how much is the seriousness and how much is the cost to be paid to both okay now the for example for example let's let's suppose that taking the steps the necessary steps to ensure that the customer or the client is safe is very expensive the procedure to be taken the steps to be taken to protect or to ensure the safety of the client to ensure the safety of the employees in the company to ensure the safety of the firefighters who are going to you know blow off the fire and in order to make their safety the priority the company needs to invest a good amount into the safety measures and seeing that big amount of investment the company feels that it is too costly it is too costly and it is uh mm -hmm. this kind of safety is like, not uh, required because no uh, barber is also saying that yeah is not required in the sense ke ek to ye mehanga bahut hai aur dusra justified enough nahi कि इससे फिर भी देर इज नो गारंटी दैट द फायर फाइटर्स विल बी प्रोटेक्टेड इट्स उसमें गारंटी नहीं है 100% बिकॉज़ ऑफ कोर्स व्हेन दे आर गोइंग आउट देयर टू यू नो एक्सटिंग्विश द फायर दे कैन गेट बर्न एंड दे कैन गेट सीरियसली बर्न एंड इंजर्ड एंड देयर इज नो वे आउट दे कैन वेयर ऑल देयर आर्म्स एंड एवरीथिंग द सूट्स एंड द प्रिवेंटिव दे कैन टेक प्रिवेंटिव मेजर्स बट देयर इज स्टिल नो 100% गारंटी दैट दे विल बी सेफ so the company feels it is useless to invest so much and then also we don't have the guarantee 100% guarantee so they rather choose not to invest and let's just be okay with whatever little bit things they have and then they go ahead for that and then something happens and then the claimant sues the company for in the court that see they did not take proper measures and this and that so then do you think the company uh, the court will take into consideration the cost factor the cost yeah if it's analysis. a big loss like if it's if you're talking about a fire company obviously the court will definitely look into it but it's uh, if it's um, a general barber thing so the court will not uh, take it very seriously so again it will vary from case to case it will vary yeah. from case to case the facts and the figures will be looked into it will be investigated and it will vary from case to case that whether it was justified not to put so much of investment in this kind of a you know preventive measures or they should have done it and they just were too lazy to do it or they were too reluctant to invest in this yeah because Next. whenever we are going to any industry and they are dealing in like petrol and uh, mobile uh, oil stuff like that so they are more responsible they have they have to take more care of the safety and measures rather than any normal like a cloth shop they will be known answering the common practice what is the common practice or the custom in that uh, the norm in that country so that also will be uh, looked into then the social benefit how much is the social benefit and the professions and the skills like how much professional or skillful that person should be in order to perform their job like for example a surgeon cannot perform surgery had he not uh, cannot perform a big and complicated surgery has he not performed you know a good number of surgeries before and if he does not have the required experience so if he wants to take up the case he has to take up the case with a senior surgeon if he cannot do it himself he will be assisting he can become a junior but somebody else has to supervise and that has to be an experienced person an expert person a qualified and a good amount of surgeries he must have done okay 
So that's profession and skills are also required. You can't just hire someone who is not himself a qualified person to perform the job. Next, so I hope these points are clear. What all yes, things should be looked into when, what factors should be considered when you have to check that the duty of care is breached. Probability of injury, number one. Number two, seriousness of the risk. Number three, issues of practicality and cost. Number four, common practice. Number five, social benefit. Number six, professions and skill. Right, so what is res ipsa locator? Another Latin word. Res yes. ipsa. Ali, read. In some circumstances, the claimant may argue that fact be speak before themselves. Res ispa liquor. Want of care being the only possible explanation for what happened, negligence on the part of the defendant must be presumed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, like uh, there are some cases where uh, the claimant should speak only for themselves rather than like uh, in some circumstances the claimant may argue that the facts speak for themselves res ipsa locator want of care being the only possible explanation for what happened negligence on the part of the defendant must be present now what is happening Normally, uh, negligence is assumed, but he or she who has performed the duty should uh, like give an explanation to an extent so that he or she could convince the other person. By default, it is assumed that the negligence is made. The facts are speaking for themselves. That's the key over here. The facts are speaking that for themselves. Very obvious. Very obvious. Yeah. The scene is open. And the case is very crystal clear. The things are speaking for themselves. That whose fault was it? What were they doing? Kya ho tha? Kiski galti thi? Kiski negligence thi? And everything like is... Like there is no debate. No proof there needed. No. The burden of proof is reversed. And the defendant must prove now that they were not negligent. Means the case is so crystal clear. Maybe they've got an evidence through CCTV. Or maybe they have so many witnesses who saw the incident happening. And therefore, now it, it's upon the burden of proof is upon the defendant. He needs to make it clear. He needs to prove that he was not careless. The claimant must demonstrate the following to rely on this principle. The thing which caused... The injury was under the management and control of the defendant. The accident was such that it would not occur if those in control used proper care. Therefore, in Richley versus Paul, 1965, the fact that a car skidded to the wrong side of the road is enough to indicate careless driving. Hmm. What are they saying? Kimza, please explain. They're saying that, for example, if the car, I, I've seen there's an accident and the car was coming wrong way. So I can, I don't need any other evidence. I don't need to ask any, I don't need to check the CCTV camera that how the driver was driving. It is very obvious that the car was coming opposite way that means. So this is, they are also saying that if the car has been skidded to the wrong side, that is, that clearly indicates that the driver was not uh, driving it properly. So we don't need any other evidence. Ali, what did you understand? Ali, unmute yourself yes, and explain what did you understand. Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, some actions speak for themselves. There is like an example of it. That uh, if the person, even if he is not speeding up the vehicle, but still he was on the wrong side. So he is by default the culprit. Mm -hmm. He will be considered. So the example for this over here that we have is Richley versus Paul, 1965, that the fact that a car skidded 
to the wrong side of the road was enough to indicate careless driving. Okay, so the things are speaking for itself. The star skidded on the wrong side of the road. Then another case, Mahon versus Osborne, nineteen thirty nine. A surgeon was required to prove that the leaving a swab inside a patient after an operation was not negligent. To leave a swab inside the body of a patient. Is clear enough to indicate that you were careless, right? Exactly. So now it is negligent. You, yeah. as a surgeon, you as a defendant, have to prove that how it was not careless and how it was not negligent. Hmm. Next, casual cause, uh, causal, uh, sorry, causality and remoteness of damage. Please read, Kinza. Finally, the claimant must demonstrate, uh, demonstrate that they suffered injury or loss as a result of the breach. Now, the final step is that they have to prove that due to the careless and negligence, first, it, first thing was uh, that there was a there uh, there was a cause, and then second, so now now they have uh, been injured, so they have to prove that. Finally, the claimant must demonstrate that they suffered injury or loss as a result of the breach. Right. Now, what they need to prove? Now, there are two parties, A, B. B had a duty of care towards A. B breached the duty of care. But the claimant needs to prove that he suffered loss because of this particular breach. Mm -hmm. It was not because of some other factor, but because of this particular yeah. breach, A has suffered loss. Okay. So that, that's what he needs to prove. That is the third point. That is the third point. Now, first, it could be personal injury. It could be damage to property. It could be financial loss. It could be pure financial loss. Anything. But they must prove that this loss happened or was suffered because of the breach of duty of care from B. Now, over here, we will, we will go through a case. And we will see that how... The things can be different. Okay. There is damage of loss. Now, what is a pure financial loss? Ali, please read. What's a pure financial loss? Pure financial loss, also known as economic loss, is a loss which is unconnected with the physical damage. It is not usually recoverable. For example, in a Spartan Steel versus a Alloy Limited versus Martin, uh, 1973, it was held that the uh, general loss of the property due to the interruption caused by the prolonged loss of the power to a manufacturing plant as a whole was not recoverable. However, claimant were able to recover losses from the physical damage to a particular finance and the loss of the property on the damaged products in the finance, which occurred as a result of power being unexpected. Cut. What does it say, Kinza? What do you understand? They're saying that if, for example, I'm being affected, like uh, I have not been physically damaged, but on the other hand, because of your, uh, for example, you're leaking out my knowledge, my shares has gone down. So this thing has affected me if not financially, purely financially. You have not come to my house. You have not pushed me or not given me any, you know, the barber has not done anything with my neck. But on the other hand, I have uh, just uh, lost my uh, economic power. So that is also a pure financial. And which case are they saying? Spartan Steel and Alloys Limited versus Martin and Limited Company. What is the case? The case is there is a party A and there is a party B. The party B is responsible for the electricity for providing electricity to A. And because of that unexpected power shutdown, company A was unable to use that time to convert into money. It was unable to run its machinery. It was unable to perform work. It was unable to manufacture at that time when the power was cut down. So therefore the company suffered purely financial loss. Financial loss. And B was responsible for it, yes or no? Yes, yes. So this is the pure financial loss. The next. Now, upcoming, there will be a lot of cases we would be going through and all cases are very interesting. 
so the theoretical part is over which is what is a tort the types of tort and what are the things that we need to keep into keep in our mind to check whether the, the, there is a duty of care or not whether was it breached and the third one that if it was breached the loss was suffered because of that breach of duty of care these are the main things now we will be looking at the cases different different cases that what is happening now over here only financial losses happen now next next circumstance uh, next scenario the but for test okay the but for test now what is this but for test please read the case barnett versus chelsea and kensington hmc 1969 the facts ali a casualty doctor sent a patient home without treatment referring him to his own doctor the patient died of arsenic poisoning decision was the doctor was held negligent the negligence did not cause the patient's death because he would have died anyway what does it say can someone explain uh, like for example sometimes happen that uh, 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 somebody gets into a bullet and uh, he is bleeding a lot and he goes to an hospital and hospital says okay no you go to another doctor and i cannot uh, take care of you or i i don't have enough equipment or whatever so the patient has to go somewhere else uh, so that the uh, he that patient was already dying that was not the negligence of the specific doctor that he was sending it to the other one so then he would not be answerable right so now this is a different case where a doctor is being held responsible for sending his patient home and the moment the patient reaches home he dies of arsenic poisoning and the doctor yeah. just says that no i just referred him to another doctor i i could not treat him so i just referred him to another doctor but the claimant's family says the person who died of arsenic poisoning his family sued the doctor and they say that because of you it happened why didn't you uh, you know pinpoint it why didn't you die ma'am i think uh, that's unfair that doctor should have uh, should be answerable that if a person was there he should have done something he should have taken care of it now we have to check now there are three tests number one there was a duty of care yes we agree do you agree or you don't agree the doctor had yes, a duty do. of care yeah the duty of care was breached do you think was it breached was the duty of care breached Yeah. Okay, you might say that yeah. yes, you might say no. You don't know the situation. Yes, I guess it was breached. Yeah, because he was not taking care of. He was actually supposed to take care of the patient, but he was not owning the patient. But so he I said that man, उसको treat ही नहीं कर सकता, उसको refer कर दिया दूसरे doctor को. उसको क्या ख्वाब आना था कि वो मर जाएगा? Basic. How was it a breach of treatment? Of but he was a doctor. Been. He should have taken care of it. He should have noticed that. Okay, if he doesn't have the equipment, then he can later. Uh, uh, you know, we can debate on it. But on first case, we cannot say that he was not answerable. Okay, fine. Let's assume that he did breach the duty of care. Fine. He was negligent. He was careless. He was too tired to look after that patient when he came in. Yeah. Okay. Fine. The third test that did he die because of the breach of duty of care? was this loss suffered maybe yes maybe no maybe yes maybe no now the decision over here which they are stated that no he did not die because of the breach of duty of care he would have died anyways anyhow agar wo nahi bhi aata doctor ke paas to usne marna hi tha kyunki arsenic poisoning ka wo time hota hai aur wo time pura ho chuka tha ठीक है तो वो फिर भी मर जाता अगर अगर वो फॉर एग्जांपल दैट डॉक्टर वुड हैव स्टार्टेड द ट्रीटमेंट रादर देन सेंडिंग हिम टू देन आल्सो वुड हैव डाइड इट वाज इट वाज मेंट टू हैव हैपेंड द केस वाज एक्चुअली आउट ऑफ हैंड्स यस सो हियर देयर इज दिस टेस्ट व्हिच इज एप्लीकेबल द बट फॉर टेस्ट कि कुछ भी कर लो वो फिर भी उसके साथ वो हादसा होना ही था या वो लॉस होना ही था देन मल्टीपल कॉजेस विलशर वर्सेस एसएक्स फैक्ट्स किंजा um a mature, a premature baby suffered blindness after birth it was claimed that a doctor failed to notice that the baby received high doses of oxygen and this caused the blindness evidence was provided that there was there were six possible causes of the blindness including the one claim however the court 
could not as as certain which of the six actually occurred and there could not uh, could not create a direct casual link what are they saying uh, they are saying that uh, the kid uh, had blindness and uh, it was a premature baby and the parents were very upset they were saying that the doctor would have noticed that this is they uh, this is because of the doses which doctor gave as an oxygen so uh, this is the major cause but actually when the court got all the evidence they got to know that there were six other uh, six major factors six due to factors which the blindness yeah right. and, and so, so we cannot blame the doctor with the oxygen okay this is known as multiple causes that means you cannot decide upon the case that okay a was responsible because he breached the duty of care no there were various other factors as well you just can't hold him responsible because wo bali ka bakra ban chuka hai ya usko he is an easy target so you are just putting up all the blame on him no we have to look at into through the perception the case below indicates the court's flexibility when applying legal principles in exceptional cases Now there is one exceptional case over here. You can get Fair Child versus Glen Haven Funeral Services Limited. What are the facts, Ali, and what's the decision? The claimant all contracted a disease caused by a contact with as bits as bistos over extended periods of time with several different employers. The defense claimed that the disease could be contracted by exposure of one as bistos fiber. and as the claimant were employed by a number of employers it could not be established at which employer they contracted the disease decision the house of lover held all the employers who had failed to take the reasonable care contributed to the cause and were all liable are they saying what are they saying shall i explain yes Yeah, basically, uh, just like for example, it was like uh, a disease which could spread. For example, COVID, you can take. So if one who is suffers from the disease is not taking uh, reasonable care, then he or she should be responsible. So in this case, like the same way, the all the employers were uh, not taking the reasonable care. They were all put liable from the house of lords. so basically it varies from case to case ab yahan pe kya tha yahan pe bhi there are multiple causes for that particular breach of duty of care but what are the what is the court saying the court is saying all the employees will be held responsible all of them were liable all of them contributed to the cause so it varies from case to case the court the judges look at the case investigate it and use the best of their intelligence fair just and reasonable to either declare a punishment or to let the person go okay next novus actus intervenes now very interesting very interesting novus actor intervenes the name itself the word itself whenever you read this word what is it saying intervene intervene means interference intervention now how and what and let's look at it through case the first one the act of the claimant act of the claimant so what is it saying there is mcu versus holland hanen and cubits limited 1969 the facts the claimant had a leg injury which was prone to causing his leg to give way from time to time while at work he failed to ask for assistance when negotiating a flight of stairs he fell and was injured as a result the decision the fact that the claimant failed to seek assistance was unreasonable and was sufficient to break the chain of causation what is the what are they saying see they are saying that there is a party a Who is the claimant, and there is a party B who is the company. Now A had a injury in the leg. ठीक है किसी वजह से उसको जख्म already था और उसको सीढ़ियों से उतरना था company की सीढ़ियों से उतरना था नीचे. And A did not ask for help. अब जब वो खुद already उसकी जख्मी टांग है वो खुद जब नीचे उतरने की कोशिश की उसने तो वो गिर गया और उसको मजीद injury हो गई. Now what he is doing, he is just suing the company. That it's your fault. 
क्यों ऐसी सीढ़ियां बनाई इतनी गंदी सीढ़ियां थी मैं गिर गया मुझे और चोट लग गई नो वॉट द कोर्ट डिसाइड और वॉट इज द कोर्ट सपोज टू डिसाइड देखो अब जब इतना आप लोग दोगे ना लीगल हेल्थ लीगल सपोर्ट तो फ्री हो जाएंगे हर तरह के केस आएंगे जरूरी नहीं कि सिर्फ यू नो वो वाले केसेस आए जो जेनुअन हो जो वाकई में बेचारे हो जो ऑल काइंड ऑफ केसेस होता है ही शाउटेड ऑन द कंपनी पीपल मिसयूज दीस थिंग्स लाइक एनीथिंग एग्जैक्टली देन व्हाट हैपेंड व्हाट डिड द कोर्ट से द कोर्ट सेड कि ना बेटा ना ईरज ठीक है तुम्हारा खुद का कसूर था इट वाज यू हु डिसाइडेड नॉट टू टेक हेल्प नोबडी रिफ्यूज्ड टू हेल्प यू एंड यू कुड हैव आस्क्ड फॉर हेल्प एंड आपको कोई भी हेल्प कर देता आप खुद बिना वजह की स्मार्ट खान बनने चले थे और खुद ही छोड़ गए थे इसमें कंपनी का क्या कसूर है सो नाउ दिस इज द एक्ट ऑफ द क्लेमेंट बिकॉज़ ऑफ द एक्ट ऑफ द क्लेमेंट हिमसेल्फ he breaks the chain of causation he breaks the chain of causation and he gets hurt and suffers a loss and it was not because of breach of duty of care by the defendant makes it clear yes second yes ma'am act of third party ali please read where third party intervenes in the course of payments that defendant will normally only be liable for the damage Until the pre-intervention, for example, Knightley versus Johns, 1982. They didn't handle the traffic control following the accident. The negligence led the claimant, a police officer, being killed. The defendant who caused the accident successfully argued that the negligence handles handling by the police inspector broke the chain of causation between his negligence and the death of the officer. What are they saying? Right now, over here. Saying that. Uh, right. Novus actus intervenience. Novus actus intervenience. Intervention हो रही है. Interference हो रही है. पहला intervention का case है act of the claimant. मेरे खुद के action की वजह से I am hurt. I suffer a loss and I am blaming another person. So that is not acceptable. Second. Act of a third party. It was not because C. Now there are two parties A and B. Okay, B is or B has been blamed or condemned of breach of duty of care, and A has suffered the loss. But in reality, when the court investigates the matter, it was not the fault of B because of which the loss was suffered by A. It was actually because of C, a third party's act, that A suffered the loss. Like for example, like for example, Pakistan का bowler आते हैं और एक बड़ी जबरदस्त सी in swing ball कराते हैं, right? And the cricketer is about to hit the ball with his bat के अचानक से हवा का झोंका आते हैं and the in swing turns into out swing. and then he goes out hone ke bajaye uska chakka lag jata hai theek now tell me who is responsible is the bowler responsible is the batsman responsible or was there a third factor third party third factor it was a third party which was responsible to make the in swing ball out swing ball kis ko ilzam lagaoge kismat tooti hawa tooti बारिश हो गई बारिश हो गई किस पे हो गए राइट सो ओवर हियर द सेम थिंग इज ए हैज सफर्ड अ लॉस एंड ए ब्लेम्स बी फॉर इट बट इन रियलिटी बी की वजह से नहीं नुकसान पहुंचा है सी की वजह से नुकसान पहुंचा अब सी कुछ भी हो सकता है सी कुछ भी सी कुड बी अर्थ क्वेक सी सी कुड बी हवा का झोंका सी कुड बी अ छोटा बच्चा रास्ते में आ गया सी कुड बी अ साइकिल वाला सी कुड बी बराबर में मोहल्ले में बच्चे क्रिकेट खेल रहे थे वो बॉल उड़ के आ गई सर पे लग गई ठीक है इट कैन बी एनीथिंग एट ऑफ अ थर्ड पार्ट सो देयर इज अ केस ओवर हियर लेट्स गो थ्रू इट लैम वर्सेस कैमडन द फैक्ट्स कैन सर प्लीज रीड the defendant negligence caused a house to be damaged as a result it had to be uh, vacated until it could be repaired during the vacate uh, vacant period squatters took up residence and the property suffered further damage 
illustration by squatters was a possibility that the defendant should have considered, but it was not held to be a likely event. Therefore, the defendant should not be liable for the additional damage caused by the interven uh, intervening action of the squatters. What are squatters, man? It's an animal. First, what did you understand? Explain what is it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, actually, something happened to my property, and I had to weekend. And then the uh, party was saying, "Okay, I'll whatever I've done with your property, I'll just uh, repair it and make all the changes." What happened? That while he was making up the changes, some squatters I don't know what squatters are. Squattered came in, and the property was further damaged. Is it an animal? Go for a vacation. A damn squatter. A dam for an animal. Google, I don't it, know. Google it right now. You, you guys are Google experts. Come on. Google it. What's a squatter? Like unlawful possession of place. Okay, okay, okay. Some other people came in and started living there. Okay. Kabza mafia. <laughs> it was a flood okay. ki se we heard that so many people are coming here in Karachi and just uh, you know getting inside some lot mm -hmm. government yeah, places, yeah, yeah. schools, True. which are locked for huge like long okay. period of time. Squatters. Mm -hmm. Next. So they came up and the property was more damaged. So the decision was made that he was not the party who was already taking care of the property and was covering up the damages and he was not expecting these things to be happening. So obviously he won't be uh, he won't be liable for that damages. Exactly. The third party is responsible. Third mm -hmm. event. Then natural events. Natural events can be unforeseeable. Mm -hmm. It can be related. Yeah, natural to disasters. COVID. Natural disasters. Covid आ गया. किसको पता था? उसकी वजह से बहुत सारा loss हुआ. दोनों parties. Mm -hmm. So now remoteness of damage. What is remoteness of damage? Ali. Please read. I need to look at my name. Kissy, what is it? Give it to me. A negligence claim can still fail in the damage cause is too remote. The test of reasonable foresight developed out of the, the wagon now. Liability is limited to damage. That a reasonable man could have foreseen. This does not mean the exact event must be foreseeable in detail. Just the eventual outcome is foreseeable. That's our job. Kinza, explain. I don't understand. Kinza, anything? Ma'am, they are saying that uh, it's okay if you're not a very special, uh, special person, specialist, but still you have some common sense. You should be seeing some of the, uh, you should be assuming some of the future as facts. It's not that you have to be perfect in it, but at least some of the facts you should be seeing it, it should be reasonable, uh, whatever damages can be done. Like, for example, if you talk about a school, they should be, it, they cannot say that, okay, we did not even think that the guard, you know, can be, uh, can be doing this right. stuff. They, 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 it should be in their mind. It, it's not like they have to be professional in, in it, but they have to be, they can say that, no, okay, we are the educationist. We don't know what the other factors are. No, if yes, it's okay. You're not exactly. dealing Similarly, in this. Similarly, just but... like we Karachiites are so aware and so much, you know, foreseeing that, okay, yes. can our phone can get snatched, exactly. a bike person can come and do anything. So it's, yes. uh, so we stay alert somewhere or the other, in the backside of our mind, we are yeah. aware that this may happen. Anyways, remoteness of damage says that we had no idea and we were not reasonably foreseeing that this could have happened. Okay, and the case is the wagon mound case, which we have discussed already about the ship going on the Sydney Harbour, the oil spills and the spill or the spill oil on the ocean floats to the seaside and the factory catches fire. So it was not foreseeable. It was the damage was remote and therefore the company was not held responsible.
Okay, so I hope you will remember this case, the bag and mouth. Next, Jolly yes. versus London Borough of Sutton. The facts, the defendants should have removed a boat which had been dumped two years previously. A teenage boy was injured while attempting to repair it. Who did he say that he was going to go and go and go? क्या बड़ी थी आपको एक अनजान बोर्ड को ठीक करने की इवन दो द प्रसाइज इंसिडेंट वॉज नॉट फोर सी एबल द अथॉरिटी शुड है फोर सीन दैट सम हार्म कुड बी कॉज सिंस दे न्यू चिल्ड्रन रेगुलरली प्लेड ऑन द अबैंड बोर्ड सो ये रीजन देकर कोर्ट ने कहा कि नहीं ये फोर सी एबल था आपको मालूम होना चाहिए जब आप इस तरह बोर्ड को अबैंडन करके जाओगे बच्चे तो खेलते हैं वो बच्चों की खेलने की जगह थी वहां बच्चे फैमिली जाते थे बच्चे पेश कर सकते हो वॉट रीजन कैन यू गिव टू हेल्प योर सेल्फ टू डिफेंड योर सेल्फ नंबर वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटरी Contributory negligence we just read a while ago that act of the claimant yani jis bande ne aapko sue kiya hai us bande ka khud ko chot lagane mein bahut bada haath hai khud ko nuksan pahunchane mein bahut bada haath hai like for example there is a case and this is the case sears versus harlow main aapko samjha deti hu the case is what ke one woman goes to a seminar okay she attends the whole seminar and The, the of course the seminar is happening in a big hotel and that hotel has a washroom for ladies and the, there are a lot of cubicles in that washroom she goes to one of the cubicles and she locks herself and unfortunately the lock is malfunctioning she gets locked in the washroom she gets stuck over there for long hours she is banging the door she is calling for help she is screaming she is shouting she is calling signals nahi aa rahe वहां पे कोई भी नहीं है कोई जवाब नहीं दे रहा अनफॉर्चुनेटली सब जा चुके हैं सेमिनार से और वो आखिरी बंदी थी जो वॉशरूम में अब वो क्या करती है वो घबराहट के मारे शी स्टेप्स ऑन द कमोर एंड शी ट्राइज टू जंप ऑफ द विंडो सिल एग्जॉस्ट की जहां छोटी सी जगह बनी होती है वो कमोर पे चढ़ के वहां से छलांग लगा के कुछ कर निकलना चाहती है अनफॉर्चुनेटली हर फीट स्लिप्स वो गिर जाती है उसको चोट लग जाती है फ्रैक्चर हो जाता है अगले दिन कोई ना कोई आता है वॉशरूम खोलता है वो निकलती है चिल्लम चिल्ली करती है सू कर देती है होटल को सू करती है एंड द होटल पीपल से दैट शी गॉट इंजर्ड इट्स नॉट आवर फॉल्ट ये शी गॉट लॉक्ड इन फॉर आवर्स फाइन हमारी गलती थी हमें मेंटेन करना चाहिए था बट उसको जो फ्रैक्चर हुआ है वो उसको खुद की वजह से हुआ है हु आस्ट हर टू क्लाइम ऑन द कमोर्ड एंड जम्प ऑफ दैट सिर कैन शी वुड शी बी एबल टू वॉज इट पॉसिबल नो तो वो इंजरी और लॉस उसको खुद की वजह से हुआ है तो पूरा का पूरा ब्लेम हम पे मत डालो कि उसके बाद दे आल्सो सेड कि हाँ भाई वो तो वहां सिग्नल्स नहीं आते तो उसमें हमारा क्या कसूर है ये तो फिर जो जो सा तुम्हारे पास वो था जैज का या फिर फोन का या फिर पता नहीं किसका तुम यूज करती थी उसके सिग्नल्स खराब है तुम उस कंपनी को शू करो सो देर आर सो मेनी फैक्टर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबल right it was not only our fault that is contributory negligence voluntary non fit injuria again voluntary the word voluntary means voluntarily you are accepting the risk of injury yani ke claimant khud accept kar rahe ki ha meri galti thi mera bhi isme thoda sa kasoor tha main bhi jazbati ho gaya us waqt maine bhi aisa kar diya voluntary non fit injuria okay So here, ICI versus Shatwell, the claimant and his brother disregarded safety precautions. यानी कंपनी ने बोला था ये 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 करना safety precautions लेना हमने नहीं ली हमने जानबूझ के नहीं ली हम careless हो गए मैं और मेरा भाई जिसकी वजह से हमें injury हो गई और अब हम अगर court में जाके sue भी कर रहे हैं इस आस से कि कुछ हमें मिलेगा तो कुछ नहीं मिलने वाला भाई क्योंकि आपने खुद accept किया कि हाँ हमने guidelines तो दी हुई थी हमने खुद ही नहीं पहना हमने खुद ही वो precautions नहीं ली Next. Now see, the defendant must prove. Now defendant को क्या prove करने हैं? देखो जी, जब claimant होते हैं ना, तो जाके court में sue करते हैं. उसको अगर पता भी होता है कि मेरी गलती थी, 
वो क्यों बोलेगा कि मेरी गलती थी अगर उसको पता है उसकी गलती थी तो वो कोर्ट में सू नहीं करेगा सबसे पहली बात वो कोर्ट में सू ही इसलिए कर रहे हैं कि शायद वो इल्जाम सामने वाले पे लगा के कुछ पैसे निकलवा ले कुछ उसका फायदा हो जाए कुछ किसी तरह से कुछ बंद हो जाए ठीक है सो दैट्स व्हाट ही ट्राइंग टू डू एंड दैट्स व्हाई व्हेन द डिफेंडेंट व्हाट ही नीड्स टू डू ही मस्ट प्रूव दैट द क्लेमेंट वाज फुल्ली इंफॉर्म्ड ऑफ द रिस्क्स एज अ कंपनी मेरा फर्ज था कि मैं इंफॉर्म करूं क्या-क्या रिस्क्स हैं क्या-क्या प्रिकॉशंस लेने चाहिए वो सब मैंने इंफॉर्म कर दिया था मेरे पास इसका प्रूफ है हमने सेशन लिया था उस सेशन में इसकी प्रेजेंस थी और मार्क है सब कुछ ठीक है सो इट इज ऑलरेडी आई हैव द प्रूफ आई इवन हैव द सीसीटीवी फुटेज दैट ही न्यू दैट दीस वर द रिस्क्स एंड ही न्यू व्हाट प्रिकॉशंस नीड्स टू बी टेकन बट ही डिड नॉट टेक हिमसेल्फ ही वाज रेकलेस हिमसेल्फ नेक्स्ट बिकैरियस लाइबिलिटी हम डिस्कस कर चुके हैं कि एम्प्लॉयर की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी कब और कैसे किस शक्ल में आ जाती है जिसमें हमने केस भी पढ़ा लिस्टर वर्सेस और एसली हॉल ये वही वार्डन वाला केस है बोर्डिंग स्कूल वार्डन एंड द स्कूल वाज वॉज लाइड देन प्रोफेशनल एडवाइस एक्सपर्ट कैपेसिटी नॉट प्रोफेशनल एडवाइस आप किससे जाके लेते हो और किस किस मामले में लेते जब को बहुत टेंस होता है Exactly. But the court will decide whether suing that person was that did he was did he have any duty of care? Did he breach the duty of care? And if he breached the duty of care, was the loss suffered because of his breach or not? Or was there a third party interference, okay. or he was responsible for his own loss? So there comes into mm-hmm. the professional advice, special relationship. Now, uh, for example. let's discuss there are two professional advices number one professional auditor auditor is a professional person he is an expert he issues a report every year for a company and many people rely upon that auditor's report to take many decisions okay auditor knows this ऑडिटर को ये बात मालूम है कि कंपनी के स्टेक होल्डर्स बैंक गवर्नमेंट एंड वेरियस अदर पीपल विल बी लुकिंग और टेकिंग सेकेंड ओपिनियन फ्रॉम द ऑडिटर्स रिपोर्ट विल बी कंसिडरिंग दैट रिपोर्ट टू टेक देयर डिसीशन बिग इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीशन मगर उस ऑडिटर रिपोर्ट को देखते हुए जब डिसीशन लिया इन्वेस्टमेंट की कंपनी को बहुत बड़ा लॉस हो गया कंपनी को बहुत बड़ा लॉस हो गया या बाद में पता चला कि कंपनी तो करप्ट करप्ट थी या कंपनी इलीगल एक्टिविटी में इन्वॉल्व थी तो स्टेक होल्डर ने क्या किया ऑडिटर को जाके सू कर दिया कोर्ट में व्हेन ही वेंट टू सू द ऑडिटर द ऑडिटर सेड यार मुझे नहीं पता था कि आप इस रिपोर्ट को इतनी अहमियत दोगे और आप इसके बेसिस पे इतना बड़ा फैसला कर लोगे और बाद में ऐसा हो जाएगा मुझे तो नहीं पता था मोर ओवर एज वी हैव स्टडीड किन्जा disclaimer page the disclaimer page every every professional person puts along Those, with the report yeah. a disclaimer page ki jisme wo de deta hai ki bhai apne own risk pe faisle kar liyega ye meri best of knowledge aur is period ke liye ye maine report bana ke de diye magar iske baad and some other time there is exclusion of clause yes उसके yeah. बाद कुछ होता है तो आई एम नॉट रिस्पॉन्सिबल क्योंकि जाहिर इतनी बड़ी आवाम है उसमें से कौन क्या फैसला लेगा उसकी रिपोर्ट को कितना सीरियसली लेकर लेगा और mm. उसने सीरियसली उसकी रिपोर्ट को लिया या उसका अपना खुद का फैसला था ये कैसे प्रूव करोगे वॉज ही डूइंग दैट इंटेंशनली टू टीज द ऑडिटर टू लेट डाउन द ऑडिटर और टू जस्ट टेक सम मनी फ्रॉम द ऑडिटर फ्रॉम द कंपनी राइट ये एक केस हो गया ऑडिटर लेट्स लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल ऑफ अनदर केस योर फैमिली डॉक्टर ओके यू आर गोइंग टू योर फैमिली डॉक्टर टू डिस्कस सम ऑफ योर हेल्थ इश्यूज 
एंड आफ्टर डिस्कसिंग योर हेल्थ इशू विद दैट फैमिली डॉक्टर यू सेइंग दैट ओके आपने ऐसा गाइड किया है तो ठीक है मैं ऑपरेशन करा देता हूँ चूंकि आपने ऐसा गाइड किया है और ऑपरेशन कराने के बाद आपका मसला सॉल्व नहीं होता बल्कि बढ़ जाता है so then you can go to the court and sue that doctor and the doctor will be held responsible why because he had a special relationship he knew that he was your family doctor and he knew that his each and every uh, statement and advice you will take very seriously matters yeah okay and you will be doing according to it. so agar to koi breach dekho duty of care thi yes breach hui hai Might be, might not be. अगर तो उसने negligently yeah. आपको advice नहीं दी तो मतलब breach नहीं हुआ मतलब mm. कोई और factor responsible है आपकी injury के लिए आपकी loss के लिए Your operation did not mm. go successful means either the doctor is the doctor who operated on you he committed a mistake or it's highly possible that you contributed to your injury maybe you were not diagnosed correctly any any other factor yeah. could be responsible apart from the doctor who was having a special relationship. बट इन केस अगर ये प्रूफ हो गया कि नहीं वो नेग्लिजेंटली उसने आपको एडवाइस दी उस 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 दिन वो बहुत थका हुआ था वो ड्रंक था वो अपने स्टेट ऑफ माइंड में नहीं था और इफ यू आर एबल टू प्रूव कि भाई उसने बहुत नेग्लिजेंटली आपको मशवरा दिया उसने आपको प्रॉपरली चेक भी नहीं किया आपकी रिपोर्ट्स भी नहीं देखी टेस्ट भी नहीं करवाए एंड यू जस्ट आस्क यू टू गो फॉर अ सर्जरी हाउ एंड वाई so then he will be held responsible so it is it will vary from case to case next okay please go through this case headley bind and company limited versus heller and partners you have 2 minutes to go through the case and explain it to me okay the hp and arora are getting question information on is financial one
All right. Now explain. Advertising is doing acting for a person. Help me with shopping here. Yes, Ali. Mommy. And basically, uh, uh, HB Bank, uh, uh, for example, HB Company uh, asked for uh, like you can say consultation from B Company. B Company is Easy Power. So they requested, uh, and uh, the B Company replies. For which A rank the point? So, uh, uh, like the B company sued the A company that due to the negligence of the A company, he like suffered a loss. Okay. It is the case. The decision was HP. Uh, just HP means the A company. Uh, were avoid to make liability by the virtue of the disclaimer. They had put the disclaimer that if like we are not solely and wholly responsible for whatever we have like tagged, so that's why they were uh, restrained from the uh, damages. Okay. But due to the special relationship, they had. Negligence without succeed. This line is that I don't get this line. This last line is like remaining, otherwise, this is what I get. Okay, Kinsa. Um, uh, there was an advertising company, HB, and they were doing they were doing business for they were making advertisement maybe for the S SE Power Limited. Now, SE Power Limited HB company requested some information so that they can you know advertise whatever the stuff is. Uh, edge uh, uh, SE Power gave them uh, the their statement financial statements without any, any taking any promises that you won't be giving it to any other source. So now um, now they are uh, I think they are the SE Power is um, suing uh, HP for leaking out their or miss their negligence of their misstatements. They are giving them the responsibility. Right. So basically, who is suing whom? SE Power suing HP. Easy Power suing HP, or you can say HB suing HP. Okay, so let's consider the two parties as A and B. And what was the what was the contract between A and B? That they'll be making up their advertisements. They will be making up their advertisements, and and will be getting the financial statements as well. Was they it in said the contract? That we will be acting as your advertising agent. Okay. Yeah, that's. And they entered into a contract, and they said that अच्छा एक financial settlement भी हो गई कि हम इतना pay करेंगे और आप ये advertisement करो. Now, due to a misstatement by Easy Powers Financial about Easy Powers Financial Resources, क्या हुआ कि इनका आपस में थोड़ा सा conflict arise हो गया. Now, while HP were able to avoid liability by virtue of disclaimer, अब HP ने तो सब तो सीधा सीधी बोल दी कि भैया हमने तो disclaimer पहले ही दिया हुआ था. हमने तो पहले ही disclaimer दिया हुआ था. हमने तो पहले ही disclaimer दिया हुआ था. So what he says that he escapes the duty of care, causing mm -hmm. financial loss by negligent. ये गलती से हुआ है और मैं मेरी कोई ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर नहीं थी और हमने तो पहले ही डिस्क्लेमर दे दिया नेक्स्ट वेयर देयर वाज नो कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअल और फिडिशरी रिलेशनशिप इट डिसाइडेड एज ओबिटर डिक्टा दैट एचपी वर गिल्टी ऑफ नेगलिजेंस हैविंग ब्रीच द ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर बिकॉज़ अ स्पेशल रिलेशनशिप डिड एग्जिस्ट हैड इट नॉट बीन फॉर द डिस्क्लेमर अ क्लेम फॉर नेगलिजेंस वुड हैव सक्सीडेड जो उन्होंने क्लेम किया कि भाई आपका कसूर है यू ब्रीच द ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर तो उसके लिए वो क्या था यू ब्रीच द ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर सक्सीड हो जाता मगर चूंकि डिस्क्लेमर दिया हुआ था दे दे फेल्ड ओके ओके इट्स जस्ट लाइक द व्हेनेवर वी गो टू द म्यूजियम पार्क देयर इज अ डिस्क्लेमर दैट द पर्सन विद द हार्ट डिजीजेस शुड नॉट गो विद दिस टू आवर एग्जैक्टली इट इज लाइक द सिमिलर 
even there's a disclaimer in malls and in public places that take care of your own belongings we are not responsible theek hai aapke belongings agar aapka jo mobile wagera hai and ma'am here it says because a special relationship did did exist what does that mean how they were not uh, they, it, there wasn't special, any special relation special relationship did exist they can see they go of business special relationship kaise hua because they were advertising agents acting for a new client they were into a contract right so they knew that the their customer would rely on them okay okay because it was a direct on now you and i have a direct contract ek tarah se you as students mm. are relying on the teachers guidance mm. so i i know that we have this special relationship i am not just recording a video and putting on the youtube and i don't know that which student is taking guidance from that particular video okay okay but i am specifically into a spe- special relationship with you guys yes had i given a disclaimer ki bhai i am not responsible if you plunk theek hai i am not responsible because i have uh, performed my duty and i have performed my job and i have also done it with duty of care and the evidence is that each and every lecture is recorded if anyone has a question has a doubt they can go and check the recording and they can see whether i performed well or not whether i had taken care duty of care or not theek so ye special relationship tha magar disclaimer ki wajah se wo bach gaye जर्नल ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर to the public at large or to the shareholders increasing their stakes in the company in the question yes so what are they saying did i explain so uh, like it was a base for the professional negligence so uh, there was no like uh, auditor put liable for any of like their uh, recommendation made in the audit report क्या कह रहे हैं केस इज़ फंडामेंटल टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्रोफेशनल नेगलिजेंस इट वाज़ डिसाइडेड दैट ऑडिटर्स डू नॉट ओ अ जनरल ड्यूटी ऑफ केयर टू द पब्लिक एट लार्ज और टू शेयर होल्डर्स इंक्रीजिंग देयर स्टेक्स इन द कंपनी because audit because we are studying as accas we are studying uk law as accas so specifically they have highlighted this case the caparo case which brings us into this understanding that being a professional because we, we will be we would be professionals we act as professionals whether as auditor whether as financial uh, accountants whether as financial advisors whether as tax advisors or whether as any other uh, role we play as a as an accountant so we are performing this role of a professional expert and giving our opinions people will rely on our opinions people will take big decisions on our reports based on our reports but then how can we escape our liability how can we because we are not liable to the public entire public right the large public at large so how are we going to do that we are going to do that through our disclaimer report and we are not liable and also the court will support us if had we taken all the measures to give a uh, an advice which is fulfilling all the our duty of care and which is we have taken all the measures okay one is preparing information for a particular person and the other is a general circul- circulation when you are mm-hmm. making or uh, taking a decision for a particular person that means a particular company or a particular individual yeah it's customized as yeah. hired you as a, as expert as a financial advisor as a something then you are liable to him but if you are generating yeah. a report with everybody is going to use bank is also using it the stakeholders are also using it the employees are also using it the partners are also using it then the, that general circulation you can't be liable to each and every person वो तो फिर हर रात चलता बंदा तो मैं सू करता फिर तुम्हारी वजह से ये हो गया तुम्हारी वजह से ये नेक्स्ट 
So foreseeability, proximity, fairness, again, these three things which we studied already. Non-ordered role, the law sense, the pero. All right, all this you can go through yourself for the repetition. Extension of liability to third parties. So first of all, the Capero case makes it very, very clear that we have no general duty. As auditors, we have no general duty to third parties or to public at large. But auditor can owe a duty in limited circumstances or to limited individuals. That's for sure. Okay. Next. So here we have completed our chapter. Anything that you would like me to explain again? All of this is just a repetition of what we just discussed a while ago. So you can go through all of this. And definitely you should go through all of this because this, you're reading this for the first time. Okay. So we are okay. done all the important stuff. Any questions? Any questions? No, ma'am. Ah, really cup test data. Because I need to give you test two as well. We have done a lot of things, chapters complete. Ho I think for test two... Three days kaafi hai, How about I give you part B and C for test two? We have similar topics, so I think three days would be enough. First, you test one, to de de, Ali, you don't qualify for test two. Hmm. Test 1 DJ and right. then your test 2 will open. So, and test 2 would comprise of part B and part C and I will be taking the test 2 on 26th of November. Okay, you have one whole week to prepare for these chapters. Okay, Kinza, clear? Okay, ma'am. Yes. Okay, then. See you on Monday, inshallah. Have a great weekend ahead. Okay, ma'am. Love this. You too, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Well,